Hey guys, Riz from RizTech Gaming here. If you're like me and you're on the road to learning indie game development and you've chosen Unreal Engine 4 as your game engine of choice because you know about its graphics capabilities, maybe blueprints just make more sense to you. Uh, you've been watching endless tutorials, but something you keep struggling with is game character hair. Now, I struggled with in-game hair for a couple of weeks now and through about 20 different videos, 30 different threads, and some targeted questions and answers, I think I've come up with something that looks pretty damn good. Not a big performance draw, and just overall is getting near that AAA title hair that we all so desperately want. Now, this is not meant to be a final product, although it definitely could be used as one, uh, but more so I'm just hoping to teach you guys enough about the workflow that you can adapt this to your own projects however you see fit. Long ass intro aside, let's uh, get started. So. The common result is that our hair looks amazing in Blender, 3DS, Maya, whatever it may be, but how can we achieve similar result in Unreal Engine 4? Well, most of us land with either a translucent material, kind of like this one, or uh, we use a mask material which just looks blocky and ugly. Now either of these I guess could be passable in certain circumstances, but for most games when you're hitting these with different lighting effects, etc., it just doesn't look good. You get some bald patches on your character, and unless you're trying to make an ancient man with a receding hairline, I don't think that's what we're after. So uh, before we get to the solution, I want you guys to understand why we're running into these problems, and as well why this solution works. So with Unreal Engine 4, uh, the problem actually isn't a problem so much as a change in technology that actually helps us in many aspects. Uh, rendering hair just isn't one of them. Epic Games changed their rendering after UE3 and implemented deferred rendering in uh, Unreal Engine 4. What this means is that lighting paths, materials, textures, and shaders are actually rendered from the rear to the front. Uh, which is much different than most game engines in the past, which is where everything was rendered with what is called forward rendering, uh, meaning, you guessed it, front to back. So what does all of this mean for our hair? Well, the solution actually comes from old game engines in the 80s. Uh, using translucency dithering along with UE4 subsurface shading, we're actually able to achieve the hair result that we're looking for. English, please. We're going back to 8-bit and making our hair as pixely as the original Super Mario kind of. So I'm going to start us off here. Now I'm using a hair texture that I rendered in Blender and edited with Photoshop. Now the only texture that we technically need for this is the Albedo Diffuse, but of course having a normal roughness spec map is always recommended. Uh, and we're also going to need a flat color picture, same size if you want, doesn't really matter, uh, or a detailed subsurface texture if you want to make one and you know how to make one, uh, but we'll touch more on that in a bit. So, first of all, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to come down to the blend mode and we're going to change our material over to masked. Now, the first thing that we're going to notice well, after it compiles, it's going to look very ugly. And as well, our opacity has actually been grayed out. And now we are actually going to want to use the opacity mask. So, connect that. We'll see what happens. It's not what we're looking for yet, but we'll get there. So, um,. If you had tried setting this up using a traditional opacity mask, a white black image, you might have ended up with a sort of pixely cut out low quality foliage looking hair, which in some cases might be okay for say mobile games uh, or possibly top down or 2D. But let's just take this one step further. So next we're gonna add in uh, a new node implemented in UE4, uh, currently using version 4.18.3 and it is called a dither temporal AA. Now basically what this node does is it turns our translucency into a pixely image but then the AA anti-alias, anti-alias is the edges using a random value that we can adjust. Uh, honestly I don't fully understand the adjustment, just kind of trial and error for me uh, to figure that one out. Anyways, so what we're going to do is we're going to right click search for dither and we're going to uh, plug in the textures alpha into the threshold and let's set the random to a constant of 1 because that's what I found works and plug the result into our opacity mask. Now what we're going to get here is actually going to look kind of similar to the translucency problem that we had before. 
Just give it a second to compile here. Okay, so if we look closely, uh, we can see that we still have that translucent effect. You can kind of see the grid through the uh, material in some spots. And that's going to result in our character having some unwanted uh, kind of bald spots or bald patches. So uh, the uh, what I mentioned before was subsurface shading. So let's go ahead and apply that. So subsurface shading, short version, is a color or texture that is rendered underneath the surface of the material. Uh, very useful for making materials that bounce light differently as it passes through, such as ice or jade, as you can see here. So first of all, we're going to go down to our shading model, and we're going to change this to subsurface. Now we can see that our subsurface color output has opened up for us. Uh, for our purposes here, I recommend using a darker color than the color of your hair. I'm in fact just using flat black since I have some lighter spots in my hair and it results in a nice layered effect. Uh, so let's go ahead and add in a texture sample. Let's go ahead and plug that value right into the subsurface color. So now if we go ahead and compile, we are going to see the result. Okay, so we can see here that we're getting close to the result that we're looking for. Uh, last step is, now uh, again, as I said before, it's best to have spec and roughness maps, or uh, if you want, uh, in the future I can release a video showing how I set up my uh, specular and roughness maps. But for now, uh, we're just going to hard code these in with a constant of 0.02. And for the roughness, Put in 0 0.5. This is just numbers that I found have worked pretty well for me. And so we're going to compile this and take a look at what we have. Perfect. So as we can see here, this is more of the result that we are looking for. We can see that we have our strands of individual hair. Uh, they're still being rendered as slightly transparent. So we will still be able to see some of the materials that are behind it, which is going to result in some nice texturing. Uh, of course, I would recommend going ahead and applying a normal map, specular roughness, as we can see here, just to get a more detailed effect. Now, I'm going to go ahead and apply this to all of my hair models here, and then we will see what this looks like on a character. So as you can see here, we've applied this same effect to my other texture, and we're getting a pretty nice result. So if you head on over to our to my character here, now my hair material is not of the highest quality, uh, as uh, it is the result of a week of poor exporting practice simply for the sake of getting this to work. But if you have higher quality materials, your results are actually going to be much better than mine. So so here this is a character I made in MakeHuman, uh, retopologized and rigged and animated in Blender, and then textured in Photoshop. Now we can see that we're getting pretty damn close to the result that I know at least I've been looking for for a very long time. So we've got nice hair, hair strand effects, the feathering and the texturing looks good. Uh, now also this gives us a level of detail or a lot effect as the dither translucency will actually fade out the unviewable edges once we zoom out far enough. Uh, meaning that we actually save on some draw calls using this technique and when animated close up we may get some minor ghosting uh, but overall the result should be pretty good. Perfect, so let's go ahead and just take a look at this in game. see that we're kind of getting a result that's actually starting to look pretty good. So this is my first tutorial since I started my game dev journey not too long ago. If you guys want to see more, possibly a tutorial series outlining my Blender to the Unreal Engine 4 workflow and how I got my character to this point or my game to this point, uh, 
then for sure just let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to share that with you guys. Uh, as well, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos on achieving high quality results for your Unreal Engine 4, Blender, or even Unity projects. Now, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.